Oh, so Joy, can you tell us uh, why you decided to come out here to City Hall today? I was a uh, bridesmaid today. You were bridesmaid? <laughs> oh. Friends of yours got married? Yes. Oh, oh good, nice. Good friends. One was kicked out of the military. Don't ask, don't tell. She was a drill sergeant. And she just got ordained as a Southern Baptist minister. Got married to her lover and already wife because they were married in a church. The Reverend Pat Bumgardner of the MCC uh, Church in New York. She was here to officiate her full clerical garb and I was here uh, to honor the dignity and the, the real level of, of achievement that this is for all of us. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Do you, have, do you have any plans to uh, get married in the near future? In the near future. You know, <laughs> uh, love is the only ingredient needed for marriage and that dignity and equality and respect that comes with that commitment of marriage I think is based in love. And so when I find that love, uh, I will certainly uh, consider marriage. Uh, but we should remember that this decision, uh, this page in our history, is also the right to not get married if we don't wish to. Uh, it is simply the option to consecrate a family in the ways equal like everyone else. So we're not all forcing anybody to get married here. It's a, As a, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can choose to get married. Uh, you can choose to live your life single. But you should also know that when you do want to get married, your government here in the state will consecrate it in the full level of dignity and respect that it deserves. Wonderful. And one final question. Um, how do you feel about the fact that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is officially 58 days away from full repeal? Countdown has begun. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time coming for that. Many people have been thrown out, kicked out. There's still a lot to be done. We are not celebrating in the ways that we think this is just a political victory for some politicians. It's not. And for anybody to do that, I think, belies and betrays the journey of all 14,000 who have been kicked out. It is the soldiers who stood up and broke the law, disobeying Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that deserve the credit for this. You know how difficult it is for a soldier to break a law? I have, you know? I have four friends who were just trying to ask on tell, and I, I've heard horror stories. And I think for any politician to claim credit where it is not do that, uh, no politician should claim credit on the backs of the soldiers who fought to serve this country. A lot of their friends died. Some of them have died. And in service to our country and service to them, we should honor them. And so all of those people, uh, 14,000 plus, uh, who have suffered, and who thought that life was hopeless for them, and thought that after military service and stripping of rank and status and pension and paycheck, pick up the pieces. Realize that this government has done a lot of wrong, and it is now time to rectify that. 58 days, I'll go back. 58 days. 58 days. Go back, and it'll be a great honor to be able to go back. So you plan, you plan to go back once the policy is officially off the books? Why is that a question? <laughs> Why is that a surprise? Uh, my unit was the most supportive of all of the people in this entire, entire journey. More than any Democratic senator, more than any Democratic president, more than anybody in the organization was my unit that told me, we need you back. And uh, they went to a gay bar with me. <laughs> they, oh, wow. they said, we want to know, is it that exciting? <laughs> And they said, it's not actually that exciting. Uh, it was exciting for me because a lot of people were finally learning what it means to be gay. And as much as we live in the cities and we say gay rights is blasé, like it's already done, um, we're post-gay, I don't think so because there are certain people who still don't know a gay person. And that's why we do this because there's a gay person out there, young kid, if they think they're alone, and if they think that they can't make it in this world, we tell them that there's real hope uh, for them. You can get married, you can join the military, you can do whatever your heart tells you, uh, and you can follow your dreams. If it is to be a soldier, you can be a soldier, and you can follow the honor code as well at the same time. It goes back, goes yeah. back to what you said about choice, about the importance of choice, you know, to get married, to not get married, join the military, Just more choices. Means... You can actually that you can, you know, it's that human potential that we celebrate.